Hi there! In this video, I'm going to show you how to put two time series on the same plot. We're working with the Amazon.com stock price data. The first thing we'll do is we'll make a time series of the adjusted close price since the stock was first traded. So we need to select the date column and also the adjusted close column. And to select two ranges that aren't next to each other, on a PC, I, I hold down the control button and then clicked. On a Mac, I'm guessing it's the command button. All right, so I have those two selected. I'm going to insert. I'm going to use a connected scatter plot. And there's our time series. On the horizontal axis, I have a few too many labels, so they're overlapping. So I'm going to fix that. I'll make half as many labels. And now I'm going to I'm going to copy this or actually move this chart to an empty sheet, a new worksheet, so I have a neater place to work. So I'm adding a sheet. I'll call it graph. And I'm going to cut and paste my chart. Okay, so I'm going to add a second plot to this one. And what I'm going to do is just something very simple. I'm going to draw a time series that simply connects the first point to the last point. So I want the first date in the data set. And then I'm going to look up the adjusted close price for that date. How do I get the first date in the data set? I'm going to use the minimum function for this column. It, it returned that as a serial number and other number of days since a given date, but I want it to report as a date. There's lots of ways to reformat it. I have a menu option showing, so I'll use that. And I want to get the last date. So I'm just going to drag that down and change my min to a max. And then, if you watch the other video, you know how to use a VLOOKUP to look up the adjusted close price for a given date. So it has four parts. The cell reference to the date, comma, the whole range of data, comma, column 7, which is where my adjusted close is, and then false, which means find the date exactly, not approximately. I need to go back and make the cell range for, for the table absolute references so I can drag them and they won't change. So the adjusted close price on the first trading day was 1.73, on the last 312.24. So I'm going to add, I'm going to add these two points and the line connecting them to this chart. So I go to the chart, and I'm going to right-click and look for an option called Select Data. On a Mac or on a different version of Excel, you might do something else to find this option, but the thing you're looking for is Select Data. It might be on a menu. It probably is on a menu even, even in my version of Excel, too. But I think it's easiest to right-click and look for Select Data. All right, when I did that, it took me to the other sheet because that's where my original data is. And I have one series in here. I'm going to add another series. And I need to give it my x values and then my y values. And I don't want that one in there. I'm going to overwrite that one. And I'm going to give it just these two points. And you can already see what's happening there behind, behind my box. OK. So it added a line that connected the first and last points. I can actually show those points by formatting my data series. Look for the marker, my marker options. I use the built-in ones. Good. So that's a very simple trend that describes this overall messier pattern of data. In your work, you're going to do something that has a better trend, a better fit to the graph. 
but I wanted to just use this example to show you how to use select data so you can add a second time series to an existing chart.